Hey everyone, here I was going to talk about free camping and dispersed camping on public lands such as national forests and BLM land. And um, I was going to show you what these campsites look like and how to find these camping areas on the map and uh, different tips and tricks like apps you can use. And um, I've been in like 35 different states in the past year traveling around. I've uh, and I've been camping and boondocking in all different kinds of uh, public lands and so I'll share with you what I've learned and um, I'm actually in a national forest right now and so I am going to bring you along and show you some you know camping areas and campsites and show you what they look like as an example and then I will talk about you know other areas I've been in and yeah uh, I hope you enjoy it okay so this is the national forest i'm in right now jefferson national forest it's in virginia up in the appalachian mountains i'm right by the appalachian trail and the blue ridge parkway and a few national parks and pretty much every national forest i've been in always has this big brown sign with the big bold letters and um normally when you see a sign like this um like as soon as you pass it it's nothing but dirt roads and like a very primitive area for hunting and fishing and camping and stuff but with this particular one for some reason you have to drive this highway for like 20 minutes until you finally get to the to the you know the outdoor recreation area for camping and stuff but um yeah, so I am going to take you along with me and show you what's down here and show you my, where I've been camping for the past week or so and uh, other different campsites as an example and share with you what I've learned. Alright, so here I'm entering into the main part of the forest where all the camping and boondocking is. There's the last house before we get in here. Um, now, usually these roads are dirt roads, gravel roads, um, but this one, for some reason, it's a paved road through the main part, but there's also lots of dirt roads out here, which I'll show you in a second, and I'm going to show you what the campsites look like. All right, now, the, the roads that you find lots of camping on are often called this. They're called FS roads which stands for Forest Service Road and there is often just a number down them. Forest Service Roads are just dirt gravel roads um, but they don't always have campsites. This one I've been down this road also there's no campsites down there. This road goes for like two or three miles down there's not a single campsite but this road right here does have a lot of campsites so we'll go I'll go show you some of those now. All right, so here's a campsite like right, right here. As you can see, what they look like, all it is is just a little dirt pullout. Um, this one's pretty muddy and it's got some mud puddles. I don't like that. So here is this campsite. All right, so here is a dispersed campsite. This is what, when people use the word boondocking, this is the kind of site they're usually talking about. So as you can see, we're in a forest and out here, like I said, normally it's a dirt road, but it's a paved road, and it's just a little dirt pull-off. You come in here, and to make sure it's a dispersed campsite, the main thing that you want to check for is one of these, a fire ring. If you see a fire ring in one of these dirt pull-outs, that pretty much always means that it is a dispersed campsite. And, um, yeah, I really like this campsite. It's right on the creek. Uh, it's real nice to be on a creek because you have you know water to rinse stuff and you can I use it to like make coffee and cook with and and other things and uh, yeah I mean you can pull you can post a tent in here you can um, pull an RV in here you can camp in your car do whatever you want to do and uh, generally the 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 time limit for staying in these national forests for staying at one spot is 14 days um, Sometimes they're uh, seven days, and but sometimes they're even more than that. Like the last national forest I was in, uh, George Washington National Forest in Virginia, was uh, 21 days. And I, that uh, park ranger told me that. All right, so here I will go and show you some more spots. All right, so here is what appears to be a campsite. It's got a long little driveway.
right now here is an interesting little campsite we got a massive fire ring with tons of litter unfortunately you don't want to do that please always practice leave no trace i'm not perfect about it either but i try to uh not leave any trash or anything like that shannon get out of there come on <laughs> of course my dog goes straight into the fire pit um and yeah as you can see this is very heavily used uh potentially a homeless person has been living here or a local i don't know what that is like a little dog house or something but um this is kind of rare most campsites don't look like this like this one i don't i i typically when i when i get this kind of vibe where it feels like it's heavily used um then i generally don't stay at sites like this but uh Sometimes I do. It just depends. It depends on the kind of feeling I get from it. All right, so here is my current boondocking spot. I've been here for the past three or four or five days. And um, as you can see, there is a yellow ribbon going across the uh, little driveway here. And I sometimes do this just to kind of mark my spot, you know, like to unofficially mark my spot. And... Um, I mainly do it only on weekends, like during the week it's not really crowded out here, but during the weekends sometimes it's really hard to find a spot, all these spots are taken, and yeah, I just go like that. This is trail marking ribbon, it was only like $3 on Amazon for the roll. Alright, so here is my spot. Um, again, it has a fire. This one also has not a, uh, a picnic table, but uh, again, that's rare. Uh, it's not very common. And this one has a massive fire ring. And ooh, I left my dog's frisbee here. And down here, there's a nice little spot on the creek. Also, a little mini waterfall. And uh, yeah, I really like this spot. I have this whole area. Like, there's nothing out there. I have like pretty much like a mile radius to myself, maybe even more. All right, so I just wanted to show you those campsites as an example. Like I said, I'm in Virginia right now, and most national forests on the East Coast are in the Appalachian Mountains. Like, free camping is pretty hard to come by on the East Coast, and uh, if you know where the Appalachian Trail is, like, anywhere the Appalachian Trail is, it goes from Georgia to Maine through the center of the Appalachian Mountains. There's going to be a national forest around, um, and there's a few that aren't. You know in the mountains there's like one in south carolina on the coast and then there's one in uh just north of pittsburgh that i know about and i'm sure there's a few more but um yeah for the most part they're in the mountains nationwide for the most part they're in the mountains and out west there are tons of national forests out west i just spent four months out west it was like every few days i was in a different national forest and um like colorado has tons of national forests there's like at least 10 national forests in the mountains of Colorado. And then I know California has a ton. Yeah, you, one thing you can do, you can always call the ranger station. You can go to the Forest Service website. I forget what it is. It's like fs.gov or something like that. And you can check. Sometimes they have the uh, camping areas and the GPS coordinates on the website for, for that particular national forest. Like, they'll have a page for each particular national forest. But um, in terms of, uh, now, BLM land, that's the other big organization of public lands. BLM land is uh, does not exist on the East Coast. For the most part, BLM land is desert land. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with it, but, I ha but this past summer, I, like I said, I spent like four months out West. I, I spent a good bit of time on, the, uh, on BLM land. For the most part, it's desert land. It's not always pure desert. Sometimes it's like canyon lands, like, like on top of a rocky canyon. All right, so I'm in my car right now, and I had to drive down to the town because I was going to show you some uh, firsthand how I find these campsites on my phone and these camping areas with different maps and different apps and stuff. And I ha and there's there wasn't any cell phone service back there. And that's another thing is these areas are really bad about having cell phone service. That's one thing you have to be prepared for. They do sell cell phone signal boosters. So basically, when I get into an area and I need to go and I need to find an area to free camp or you know boondocking whatever you want to call it 
the first thing I do is I go to freecampsites.net. That's my favorite site. I have an account on there. I, I have uploaded a few places on there myself. But they have an app, but when you press the app, all it does is go to the website, freecampsites.net. And what it does is it loads your location, and it brings up this map. And the star right there in the center of the map, that's where I'm at. And all the green uh, tent symbols are free camping areas that people have uploaded. Some of them are like actual campgrounds. Some of them are individual sites or some of them are just general areas. Another thing you can do is look on uh, Google Maps and the way you find and I'll start with National Forest and then I'll talk about BLM land. So as you can see that's where I am in Virginia. Um, national forests are going to be green, like dark green on the map, but not all dark green are national forests. All right, so I'm going to start with the area where I'm at right now. Um, this is called Jefferson National Forest, and uh, as you can see, it's dark green in this area. And for some reason, Google combined George Washington and Jefferson National Forest. It's two. But yeah, you can see that you want to look and you can kind of tell where it goes along the ridge of the mountains like these uh like where it gets really dark and it's kind of like a skinny area in here but yeah so here i am right here and um the main kind of road you want to look for like these blue dots or the turquoise dots are different campsites and camping areas i have found so this is where i was up here normally you don't see campsites on main roads like this um, that's where I was camping, like I said, on that main paved road. What you want, if you zoom in closer, you'll see these little small skinny roads. Those are often dirt roads. Um, sometimes the dirt roads aren't on the map, but um, some uh, very often they are. And uh, a forest service road is the kind of road you want to look for. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in right here. You can see it says U.S. Forest Service Road. That is a dirt road. And um, that's where campsites often are, but they aren't always on uh, Forest Service roads. Like this road right here, I found campsites on it, and it's called Red Brush Road. So it really varies, but this is the kind of area you want to get into. See how it's dark green? Now keep in mind, um, a lot of these skinny dirt roads, like through here, and it'll be a bunch of uh, houses or a residential area. So you got to make sure you're in the, the main wilderness area. That's why I like freecampsites.net because it at least gets me into the general camping area. Like typically, like all the free camping and dispersed camping is in like one area. And then another area could be like a whole residential area. But um, And then another thing you can do is go like this. You... Uh, click on the national force there and you go right here and you go to the website so here's the website it's fs.usda.gov slash gwj that stands for george washington jefferson that's the forest service official forest service website and on here they will often have maps and gps coordinates uh for all the camping locations like you click here you can go on the side or you can go right here and click go camping and it'll show you see it has like dispersed camping and you can uh it'll show you it have like maps and all kinds of stuff that you can uh find the dispersed camping areas and one little tip i have for you to uh help find campsites is uh to look for a road along a creek so often these just the roads that run along a little skinny creek like see this road right here see how there's that little skinny creek running through it or running right next to the road so often those are the roads that have campsites and another app that i use occasionally is called free roam you can see right there it's got a little cactus and what it does is it brings up a map of where you are and as you can see so this is where i am it's got the national forest outlined in green which is really nice and i go up here and i press price and i put in zero dollars at the price as the price so that way it just shows me everywhere i can go for free and this one's on free the pines campground that's on freecampsites.net i don't think that one is so sometimes it'll have other stuff that's not on freecampsites.net all right so now i'm going to talk about uh blm land like i said i don't have tons of experience with it um basically the way i found blm land was the same way i used freecampsites.net but if i didn't have freecampsites.net i would look on google maps and i would zoom in and I would look in the desert areas, and a lot of times they have signs, like there will be signs for hiking trails or trailheads 
or uh, like canyons or, or, or Native American rock art. I saw that a lot out there. Um, just any kind of like outdoor recreation site will get you in the general area of where there's lots of BLM land. Like uh, uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, there's tons, that's right on the Colorado-Utah border, there's tons of BLM dispersed camping out behind the city in that desert region. And Moab, Utah, there's t it, Moab, Utah has Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park. The whole town is surrounded by BLM land. There, I found like hundreds of campsites around Moab. And uh, like in between Moab and Grand Junction, Colorado, it's like a little, there's like nothing but desert. And um, there's like all kinds of like canyons that go way back um, along that highway that goes between Moab and Grand Junction. And there's so much dispersed camping that I found back there. And um, from my understanding, uh, BLM, they also have regional offices and you can always call the regional office and ask them where there is BLM camping. All right, now I'll show you some BLM land as an example. So, as you can see, I've been really traveling around the country with all these marked spots. But, yeah, so here's Colorado. Here's Utah over here. I'll show you uh, Grand Junction, Colorado first. So, Grand, all this tan right here is uh, BLM land. It's like desert BLM land. And these national uh, conservation areas... I love this conservative area, McKinnon's Canyon. It's so beautiful. Um, are run by the BLM, are run by the Brew of Land Management. BLM, like here's another conservation area, conservative area. And all these uh, turquoise spots are different campsites that I have found. And um, so as you can see, when you zoom in, you see these little, these little roads going through these desert areas. And I'll go ahead and turn on satellite so you can see it better. And... Um, so yeah, if you zoom in, yeah, you can see the roads very clearly on BLM land. In the National Forest, it's very difficult because it's uh, the trees and stuff. So I'll go over here to Moab, Utah as another example. So here's Moab. you got Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park. And all of this tan is desert. All that tan is just sandy desert. And all the green spots are campsites I found. So here's... Uh, a bunch of campsites I found and as you can see you can see the the dirt roads going through this desert area can the canyon area very well from satellite so well Google put that little gray thing there but if it wasn't there there it went away you can see how clearly these roads are and when you see roads like this going through BLM land that's there's very often campsites on them so yeah I hope that was helpful um yeah, national uh, conservation areas and also national recreation areas often have uh, dispersed camping in them. Not always. It's, it's, it's pretty much hit or miss, but they very often do. And uh, state forests is another one. Pretty much never any free camping in state forests. So whenever I see a state forest, I just go right past it. So yeah, those are the ways that I find free camping on public lands. I know there are other ways, and there's also a few other apps you can use. But um, yeah, I hope it was helpful, and uh, this video was mainly about national forests. I might do a second video focusing more on BLM land, but um, I hope it was helpful, and thanks. Have a good one.